The subcommittee will come to order. The chair recognizes himself for an opening statement. I'm pleased that the subcommittee is marking up two public health bills today that address challenges facing our families and communities. First, H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act of 2013, introduced by Representative Bill Pascrell, reauthorizes Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, projects to reduce the incidence of traumatic brain injury, TBI, as well as TBI surveillance systems and registries. More than 3.17 million Americans live with a disability that resulted from a TBI. Every year, at least 1.7 million TBIs occur either as an isolated injury or along with other injuries, and TBI is a contributing factor to more than 30% of all injury-related deaths in the United States. These CDC programs are critical for TBI research and education and need to be reauthorized, and I'm pleased we were able to move this bill. Finally, H.R. 3527, the Poison Control Center Network Act, introduced by Representative Lee Terry, reauthorizes important activities related to poison control centers. Specifically, the bill reauthorizes the Poison Center National Toll-Free Number, National Media Campaign, and the State Grant Program. The Department of Health and Human Services estimates that in any given year, there will be between three to five million poison exposures. Sixty percent of these exposures will involve children under the age of six who are exposed to toxins in their home. Poisoning is the second most common form of unintentional death in the United States and accounts for 285,000 hospitalizations. According to a report from the Institute of Medicine, every dollar spent on poison control center services saves $7 in medical spending. I urge all of my colleagues to support these bipartisan bills. And yield back. Now is it Dingle or who? The chair now recognizes the ranking member emeritus, gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Dingle, for one minute for opening statement. Thank you for your courtesy and for holding a very important markup today. I'm pleased that the subcommittee has an opportunity to review these critical public health bills before they're marked up in the full committee. Our committee always works better when we adhere to the regular order. I'm also pleased to offer my support for the bills we're considering. The Poison Center Network Act authorizes $28.6 million for grants to support our national web network of poison control centers that have proven to be extraordinarily successful in treating victims of poison exposure. H.R. 1098 reauthorizes several critical programs at HHS to help people with traumatic brain injuries. I'm again proud to support this legislation as it will do much good for our nation's veterans who suffer from TBI at a very high rate. These bills are great examples of excellent work that the committee does when we put politics aside and come together for the public good. I hope these bills will be quickly sent to the President's desk for his signature. And I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your leadership. And I yield back the balance of my time. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Now recognize the Vice Chairman of the full committee from Tennessee, Ms. Blackburn, for one minute for opening statement. Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the hearing and I yield back my time. Chair, thanks to the gentlelady. Now recognize the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Shemkus, one minute for opening statement. I have no opening statement, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. Now recognize the gentleman from Well, are, are there any other opening statements? Anyone seeking recognition? With uh, 
um, the attendance. Um, we're going to stand in recess until um, we have further members show up. We need to wait for Ms. Plum. All right, the subcommittee will reconvene. Uh, Mr. Plone has arrived at Union Station. He's on his way, so we'll get start restarted with opening statement. Chair reminds members that pursuant to the uh, committee rules, all members' opening statements will be made part of the record. Are there further opening statements? Gentleman from Pennsylvania, Dr. Murphy, is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to speak about H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act 2013, and a concern I have. One is that the funding within uh, this bill is used for organizations that actively engage in lobbying that uh, sometimes actually involves speaking on cases involving individual patients of which they are not a treating physician nor a family member. We had before us uh, in my subcommittee an uh, oversight and investigation testimony by um, Joe Bruce, um, uh, Robert uh, Bruce, who spoke about his son who had been hospitalized, um, involuntarily committed, and an organization called the Disability Rights Center of Maine uh, spoke uh, to try and get him out of that hospital. They were successful in doing so. He then went home without medication and he killed his mother with a hatchet. Uh, I have a statement here from uh, Mr. Bruce which he gave during the testimony. I would like it attached as we describe uh, things in the spill and there's a couple of things I'd like to do if another member would like to yield me their minute. I recognize I'm out. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll yield uh, Mr. Murphy. All right, uh, thank minute. you. Dr. Murphy, we recognize for another one minute. I think the gentleman from North Carolina. It goes on to say that this organization uh, not only actively uh, got involved in a case which was against the parents and the physician's witness uh, wishes, but they also actively worked to, uh, to block other legislative efforts in the state of Maine that helped to deal with people with persistent and severe mental illness. Now, it does not end there. They also have groups which are actively involved in various states to advocate and lobby on specific pieces of legislation. Uh, and it is uh, forbidden that these organizations use it for that. But I believe what they tend to say is, well, we don't use the federal money for that part. We use it for other things. And yet it actively works against what I believe this committee is concerned about when it comes to dealing with such things as mental illness and health care overall. So I'm stating that as a concern, and as we uh, talk about uh, this during the markup itself, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to have a brief colloquy with you or, uh, with regard to what I would hope we could do in the future on this. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. Well, Chair, thanks the gentleman. Anyone else seeking recognition? Anyone else seeking recognition? Not. Again, the committee will stand in recess. An hour and a half delay on the train. Yeah. The subcommittee will reconvene. And the chair recognizes the ranking member, Ms. Plone, for three minutes for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I apologize. The train was delayed an hour and a half. <laughs> But I want to thank you and Chairman Upton for allowing regular order at my insistence on these important public health bills. As you know, I've always advocated for ensuring that the members who elect to sit on the subcommittees have the ability to participate in the legislative process. So I'm glad that the, I'm also glad that the administration was given the opportunity to submit their technical views to us because we can always benefit from their expertise. The two bills before us today address two public health issues that greatly affect the health and well-being of Americans, poison control efforts, and traumatic brain injury, and I'm glad that we're moving forward on them. The first bill, H.R. 1098, the Traumatic Brain Injury Reauthorization Act of 2013, which was authored by my friend and colleague from New Jersey, Mr. Prescrell, would continue efforts to advance better surveillance, prevention, and treatment of brain injury. At least 1.7 million traumatic brain injuries occur every year in the U.S., not including injuries sustained by active military, and they can lead to permanent disability or even death. This bill will help provide critical services to people with TBI and their families, as well as continue important research. The reauthorization would also move TBI programs out of the maternal and health children's program to acknowledge the impact of TBI across the lifespan, including older adults and returning service members and veterans. 
I also support H.R. 3527, the Poison Center Network Act, which would reauthorize the Poison Control Center grant program. And I want to thank our committee members, Mr. Engel, Mr. Terry, for their leadership on this bill. Poison exposure is a leading cause of unintentional injury in the U.S., and poison control centers help to reduce the number of deaths and the severity of illness caused by poisoning, thereby also reducing the cost burden on our health system. Annually, of all the calls to a poison control center about a potential poisoning, more than 70 percent are managed on site and outside of the health care facility, meaning that the caller gets the help they need over the phone without having to go to a doctor or the hospital. And this grant program helps to support the work of these critical poison control centers throughout the nation, including education and surveillance through the toll-free National Poison Helpline. I know that although the newborn screening saves lives reauthorization bill is not on today's agenda, both sides of the aisle are interested in moving it forward in the new year, in addition to a number of other health bills that we examined in a recent legislative hearing. So I look forward to moving all these bills through the subcommittee early next year. Mr. Chairman, the bills before us today will help meaningfully address the public health needs of our communities, and I urge my colleagues to su support them. And, and thank you again for uh, having this markup in subcommittee, and, and I do again apologize for, uh, for being late with the train. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The chair, thanks to the gentleman. Does anyone, other members, seek recognition? If not, the, I'm sorry, the uh, gentlelady from Illinois, Ms. Schakowsky, recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I want to associate myself with the uh, remarks of Mr. Pallone. In uh, 2012, um, the Poison Control Center estimated, um, prevented an estimated 35,000 ER visits and saved Illinoisans $50 million and reduced health care and productivity costs. But I also just wanted to address a comment made earlier by my friend, Congressman Murphy, about uh, protection and advocacy or PA systems, which uh, provide advocacy and resources to thousands of people with um, traumatic brain injury each year and carry out activities they are authorized by Congress to, uh, to conduct. Um, in the manager's amendment, we're augmenting the existing requirement that protection and advocacy systems submit an annual report to the secretary by requiring the secretary to submit a report to Congress describing TBI services and activities conducted by protection and advocacy systems. And this will help us learn more about the important work of those systems. Um, and I support that very much, and I yield back. Thank you. Chair, thanks to gentle lady. The chair now calls up H.R. 3527 and asks the clerk to report. H.R. 3527 to amend the Public Health Service Act to reauthorize the Poison Center National Toll Free objection, Number. Without objection, the first reading of the bill is dispensed with and the bill will be open for amendment at any point. So ordered. Are there any bipartisan amendments to the bill? Are there any other amendments? The question now occurs on forwarding H.R. 3527 to the full committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the bill is agreed to. The chair now calls up H.R. 1098 and asks the clerk to report. H.R. 1098, to amend the Public Health Service Act to reauthorize certain programs relating to traumatic brain injury and to Without trauma Without objection, research. the first three in the bill is dispensed with, and the bill will be open for amendment at any point. So ordered. The chair recognizes himself to offer an amendment in the nature of a substitute, and the clerk will report the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 1098, offered by Mr. Without Pitt. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with. Is there any um, discussion of the amendment? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Chair recognized the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you. Move to strike the last word. <coughs> Chairs, uh, the gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, I rec uh, in uh, your amendment, uh, I appreciate that you are asking the Secretary to put together a report in terms of how the uh, state grants for protection advocacy services are using the money. I raised a comment during the opening statements that uh, groups such as the one in Maine 
and, and multiple other states use this for actively lobbying on legislative issues in the states and on federal programs, et cetera. Uh, Congress does not spend money, uh, nor does it authorize lobbying or lawsuits against itself or states, nor does it authorize actions by groups to work against the medical advice in psychiatric cases, and yet that is where some of these organizations are acting. Uh, I, uh, in this, I know that you are uh, trying to uh, have some resolution to this by having the Secretary um, report back to Congress, but I would hope, Mr. Chairman, uh, that between now and uh, this goes for full committee that we might work at some other wording so that we can all achieve uh, the good work that we want to see advocacy groups do but make sure also that they're working with uh, the best interests of the so many people who are out there uh, suffering from mental illness and other illnesses and traumatic brain injury as well. As a person who, is, uh, who works with them, uh, myself and my Navy Reserve duty, I know that the military, Department of Defense, Department of Veterans Affairs cannot possibly handle all these cases. Plus, there are so many other types of head injuries that may come from sports, from accidents, et cetera, and we do need to be aware of these. But so often, persons with mental illness and persons with head injury are not aware of their problems. It is a very, very important medical and psychological fact that many of, them, that many of them have an injury to the extent they are not even aware they have a problem. The official term for this is anosognosia. And in that, when an organization takes on the, the state or physicians or someone and works against medical advice or against or lobbies actively against the state, I'm concerned that this whole issue gets uh, confused and far beyond what Congress initially intended. So, Mr. Chairman, I hope we can work together uh, between now and when this comes before the full committee to see if we can sharpen that language up so that it can really meet the congressional intent that we're supporting good work of good organizations and making sure uh, that they are also limited in the scope of what they do. The, the chair, thanks the gentleman. Uh, the chair now recognizes ranking member Mr. Plun, five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I offer my support for the manager's amendment to H.R. 1098. The amendment makes mostly technical corrections but includes a number of important changes to current law. It requires the directors of CDC and NIH to update Congress on progress in implementing recommendations from an earlier report regarding coordination of TBI activities in current and former military members. CDC and NIH would identify specific recommendations that have not been adopted and a plan to execute them. I think we know all too well how greatly our military families have been affected by TBI, so it's critical that the Department's Defense and Veterans Affairs are working alongside our health agencies to ensure the best care for returning service members. The manager's amendment also removes the requirement that the Secretary of HHS make grants for the authorized programs to HRSA, which is a change from today's structure. Instead, it would give the Secretary discretion to move this authority to another operating division within HHS. This is to allow for better coordination of TBI activities with other HHS programs focused on increased access to community supports across the lifespan. And lastly, the manager's amendment specifies authorization levels for all outlined programs. I would urge my colleagues to support this amendment. Again, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The chair, thanks, you, gentlemen. Does anyone else seek recognition? All right. If there are no more amendments, the vote occurs on the amendment in the nature of a substitute. All those in favor shall signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment agreed to. The question now occurs on forwarding H.R. 1098 to the full committee as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes have it, and the bill is agreed to. Without objection, the staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes to the legislation considered by the subcommittee today. So ordered. That concludes the business. Without objection, the subcommittee stands adjourned.